Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about lateral rectus palsy or also called as the sixth nerve palsy. So this is the paralysis of the abducent nerve which is the sixth cranial nerve. So which leads or which supplies to the lateral rectus muscle of both the eyes and the paralysis of this nerve leads to the paralysis of the lateral rectus also called as lateral rectus palsy. In this video we will see how this is uh, happening, what are the clinical features and its treatment. So let's move ahead and see what are the different uh, etiologies. Before we move on to the paralysis of sixth nerve, we should understand the course and anatomy of your sixth nerve. So the nucleus of sixth nerve is present somewhere here just above the rhomboid fossa. So it goes straight and gets an insertion right onto the uh, rectus medialis. It is one of the shortest or small or uh, pure motor cranial nerve. So it is next common to your fourth nerve paralysis that sixth nerve paralysis is also happening. So in this what happens your uh, this nerve if it gets a particular problem in any of the point wherever it is following from brain up till the muscle that could lead to the paralysis of your fourth your sixth nerve so these are the sites where the lesion can happen so this is the point where the nucleus of your sixth nerve is located and this is the point where it get inserted into your uh, muscle so either it could be a nuclear lesion or either it could be your uh, fascicular lesion so when we say the term nuclear lesion the nucleus uh, of your sixth nerve uh, lesion could happen which could be either the ipsilateral sixth nerve palsy so either you can see the loss of conjugate movement of the same side resulting from involvement of the horizontal gaze center in the pontine meridian reticular formation that is also called as the PPRF or either it could be a fascicular lesion fascicular lesion is somewhere at this point where the fascicle is present so that lesion could be because of foveal syndrome results uh, due to the lesion of your dorsal pons involving the sixth nerve fasciculus or, or other syndromes as well so next is your involvement of the subarachnoid space and next is level of the uh, petri uh, petrous apex lesion and next is cavernous sinus and orbital lesion so these are the different site of lesion where it could happen so in terms of your uh, lesion of the uh, subarachnoid space we can have your infections there are different infections which can happen so if the infection happens the subarachnoid space also gets affected and that could lead to an intrusion into the nerve also there could be problem into the basilar part or rather the petr petrous apex lesion so that could be your acoustic neuroma your nasopharyngeal tumor or your fracture at the base of skull or either the lesions of your intra cavernous part or rather what we can say the cavernous sinus lesions that is again your uh, tolosa hunt syndrome so these are some of the uh, etiologies which are commonly associated with the uh, sixth nerve palsy or either the lesion of the intra orbital part of the sixth nerve which could be because of your uh, orbital apex syndrome so clinical features when we say it is an incompetent esotropia so as we know the lateral rectus muscle supplies uh, sorry the sixth nerve supplies the lateral rectus muscle so because of which the paralysis leads to an esotropia of the eye so the when the patient looks at the opposite side of the affected muscle the amount of deviation will decrease and when we ask the patient to look at the affected side the amount of deviation will increase so generally the patient will have a diplopia and abnormal head posture so diplopia would be more on to the side of your affected uh, muscle so in this case what happens the patient has more diplopia on to the right side compared to the left side uh, so if there is a diplopia for this patient 
the patient will move his head towards the side of diplopia so as to eradicate the uh, diplopia with the head posture and an abnormal head posture in the uh, type of face turn will be seen the face will be always turned toward the affected muscle action side so in case of lateral rectus so for example if the right lateral rectus is getting paralyzed the face will turn towards the right or else if the left lateral rectus is getting paralyzed the face will turn towards the left so this is how it is seen if you see in the primary gaze here almost uh, nothing much is seen only if you see there is uh, a slight esotropia of the left eye but when you ask the patient to look on to the left side there is no deviation but when you ask the patient to look on right side the deviation increases which gives you an idea that it is an incompetent squint rest other side the deviation is not very much uh, affecting only in the uh, any case where you see the left gaze all the side you will see a deviation more present because here the uh, patient is unable to abduct the left eye so this is how you see generally inversions that the amount of uh, limitation of your adduction or abduction so generally what happens the patient is unable to abduct his eye the left eye into the left gaze so when you see a head chart screening for such patient you can find out that the right side there is a marked under action of the lateral rectus which is because of the paralysis of that side so if you see here the lateral rectus is not at all functioning leading to a under action of the lateral rectus and a compensatory over action of the medial rectus into that same uh, eye whereas when you check the left eye you will find out that the uh, muscle which is uh, having your yoke muscle so the medial rectus of the other eye will start overacting whereas your other muscles will have a similar function so th with his chart screening you can easily find out that this is the left lateral uh, the right lateral rectus which is completely affected and because of which there is an overaction of the left medial rectus as a part of treatment the simplest treatment what you can do is we wait for some time to see if the treatment of the cause will help so if there is a, a particular problem because of which the uh, paralysis arises let us say there was an aneurysm or something which was there and which can be resolved so the moment you resolve that particular thing automatically your diplopia and everything will also get resolved but if treatment of cause is not something which is uh, getting the things done other measures can be taken so in uh, our conservative measures when we say there are treatment uh, which can be done so in conservative measures what you ask the patient to use uh, vitamin b complex which can expedite the uh, neurotonic uh, which can be used as a neurotonic or else uh, you can ask the patient to use systemic steroid for any non specific inflammation so these all are the things which are given by the doctors to the patient to resolve the underlying cause other treatments which we as an optometrist or uh, or an uh, uh, we can do is to Uh, reduce the amount of diplopia by giving the amount of patch or prism or either the patient can go for a surgery or either he can opt for a botulinum toxin so what we can do is we can give a patch to the eye so the affected eye can be patched so that the amount of diplopia gets reduced or else we can give a fresnel stick on prism or a press on prism onto the eye which is having the amount of esotropia so what you will do is you will give a base out prism into this cases so generally that would help to reduce the amount of diplopia and keep the eye still into a binocular single vision state uh, to prevent amblyopia uh, we should be having the main focus we should not allow the patient to go into an amblyopic state Uh, if it is a long standing case and the patient only wants a cosmetic appearance treatment a botulinum toxin can be injected to keep the eye again back to straight because botulinum toxin what it hap does is contracts the even a paralytic muscle so the eye will come back to a normal position finally if there is only cosmetic appearance which to be taken care of you can do a surgery that is resection of your lateral rectus that is tightening of the lateral rectus 
or uh, the loosening of the medial rectus of the same eye so so a resect or a recess operation can be done to improve such cases so these are all the treatment options for your for six nerve palsy or the lateral rectus palsy thank you for your patient listening i hope this will uh, help you understand the uh, six nerve palsy or the lateral rectus palsy its clinical features and its diagnosis and treatment thank you for your patient listening uh, we will be back with uh, you in some other videos on binocular vision and optometry please do subscribe our channel thank you and goodbye